Get ready because today we are getting a jump start on the holidays with some fun and affordable wood projects for Christmas in July. You're watching Whiskey and What. My name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share all things DIY and budget home decor. So if you love that too, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you can DIY along with me and the craft buddies. Now, if you're already a whiskey craft buddy, welcome back. I am so glad you're here. All of these projects are super affordable because we're gonna make them with some cheap fence pickets. So let's head to the hardware store, pick them up, and we'll get crafting. All of the projects in today's video are going to use six inch wide cedar fence pickets. Now you can do pressure treated, but I opted for cedar. They they were only 322 each and I got the ones that were six foot long. Now when you grab them you want to look down the wood to make sure it's not bowed and you also want to make sure you don't grab pieces that have chunks out of them. If you need more help on how to pick out wood or just to get started building or with tools be sure to check out my beginner's wood guide which I will link up in the right hand corner for you. It is super thorough and it will give you all the info that you need. I ended up grabbing eight of them which was about $27 and that covered every project in this video. Make sure that you are following proper safety measures. So I always make sure that I have eye protection. These are safety goggles from 3M that are also tinted. So they also act as sunglasses while I'm out here working in the summer. Now let's grab our wood and get to work on this first project. Let's grab the fence picket and we are going to cut three different lengths. I cut one at five inches, one at eight inches, and then also one at 12 inches. Now it doesn't really matter the sizes, you just want three varying heights, and you could also use scrap wood for this if you don't wanna use a fence picket. After everything's cut, make sure it's fully sanded down, and then I decided to paint them white. You could customize them whatever color. And then once they were dry, I went back through with some antique wax from Waverly, which you can get at Walmart, and that just allowed it to look a little bit rustic. I'm going for kind of a gingerbread theme with this, so I wanted it to have the tan tint, but you could paint these whatever color you want. I'm just using a little baby wipe to get off any excess and to really buff it in so it looks dry brush. Then once those are done, I am using some ribbon. I actually got for Valentine's Day at Dollar Tree, but you can use again whatever color you want. I'm gluing one piece down the front and you could probably guess we're making presents. Once I had that piece glued down, I tied a piece around the back just so it looked like it was a wrapped present. And instead of doing bows, I decided to just do these little tails. And then on top of my gingham ribbon, I added a little bit of this tool ribbon also from Dollar Tree and it just really upped the look. You can customize these to whatever colors you have in your decor, but I'm gonna use these in my dining room where I have gingerbread decor every year. And these are also great to have for faux trees, especially before you get any of your presents wrapped. It's nice to just add to the overall vibe before you get that done. Today's video is also part of a bigger collab for Christmas in July hosted by my friend Shannon. Now she is the creator behind the Cozy Christmas Cottage, which is dedicated to Christmas. She is jumping in right now for the 2023 season and she has so many great ideas. So be sure to check that out. If she looks familiar, it's probably because you recognize her from the Daily DIYer. Shannon has two channels. I don't know how she does it, but she has amazing ideas on both of them so be sure to check those out as well as all of these other amazing creators that I've talked about before these are all my friends I love seeing what they create so head down to the description check out the playlist and see everything that they are creating for Christmas in July I know I can't wait to see what they've come up with I love the look of wood tags and the dog ears of these fence pickets lend itself to that. So I measured 12 inches down from the top of two different fence pickets to create these tags. Once they were cut, it was super easy. You could even cut that with a jigsaw or a miter box and saw. Once you've got your two pieces at 12 inches, sand them down. And then we're gonna make sure it's very well sanded. I am using a 100 grit here. And especially with these fence pickets, they are really rough. So you wanna make sure that you get them sanded down and they're beautiful wood once you do that. Then I took a one inch paddle bit to drill the top hole. You can use whatever drill bit you have on hand to create that hole. And then I'm just staining it with Early American Stain by Verithane and or Minwax. I had both cans there. And now it's time to customize with my Cricut. Now you could use a silhouette, any other vinyl cutter that you have. And I got this one that says, baby, it's cold outside in a hand lettered font from Etsy. Now here is a wet tip. I got moving too fast and forgot about the stained surface and sometimes vinyl doesn't stick to that. So that was a dud. I recut it and in the meantime, I added a coat of Mod Podge to both sides just so then that way the vinyl had something to stick to. You can also add polycrylic or you can rough it up with a piece of sandpaper and that was much better to have the vinyl stick to the surface. 
I repeated the same process with this design that I ended up customizing in Cricut Design Space. So it's one of their images. So if you have a Cricut and have Design Space, you can grab this. But I know you guys love the leopard with the trees in there. And I really like this version and it saved me time grabbing it from the creators in Design Space. I'm applying both of them with paper transfer tape so I don't rip up any of the wood. And then I'm going over the top of all of it with just a little bit more Mod Podge to seal it all down just to make sure any of those little pieces aren't gonna fly away on me. My last step is to tie the two of them together using those holes that I made with some Dollar Tree nautical rope. But again, you can use ribbon, whatever you have. And I think this is so pretty. This would sell like gangbusters on a Facebook marketplace or even in a vendor booth. This is definitely very in right now with the hand lettering and something small like this that is a sign that isn't going to take up a huge space on people's wall is also a huge win. So definitely consider this if you're trying to sell some stuff for the holidays. Up next, we're doing a fun spin on a Anna White plan. I actually made this in my everyday fence picket video a couple weeks back and it was a hit, but I decided to customize it so I could make it Christmas. So we are gonna make her birdhouse plans, but instead of drilling a hole for a bird, we are just gonna leave it plain and we need the eaves of the house. So I took my saw, adjusted it to 45 degrees and found the center of my board. Now I will give you a cut list here in a second so you can write that down. But on our sides of the houses, we are going to cut one 45 degree angle, flip it over, line up your blade again, and cut a second 45 degree angle to create the front and the back of our birdhouse, which is then going to become a gingerbread house. I used it kind of as a stencil to find the middle of my second piece and repeated that step. Now, once I had all four pieces of the structure of my house, I needed to figure out how big the bottom of it needed to be. The Anna White plans call for it to stick out the front and I didn't want that. So I ended up just laying it out, measuring it and cutting it to size, which worked perfectly. And then the last step that's optional, I decided to rip a half inch off of my roof piece just so the overlap was fine, but you don't have to do that. You could do it without ripping the one inch off. <laughs> Then we're gonna stain everything in Early American, let it dry overnight, and then it's time to assemble. So I'm gonna start by using some wood glue. You can get this at your hardware store, super inexpensive. And then we're also gonna use some clamps to hold it together. Now, once your clamps are clamped down, you wanna make sure that all of your pieces are flush. And if they're not, release your clamp and kind of fix it. So then that way everything is going to dry correctly. If you have any wood glue kind of squirt out the side, you can go ahead and wipe it off either with your finger or a wet paper towel. And then I decided to go in by hand with one and a quarter inch finishing nails that we just had on hand to hook it all together to kind of give it some extra hold. And the reason I did this versus my nail gun is because with how this is laid out and with the size when I made the birdhouse before I got a lot of pops of my nails and this was great because I had a lot more control of where the nail was going. So once the sides were all set, I attached the bottom in the same way. And then I had my two roof pieces together in a 90 degree angle, used my clamps again and used three of those nails across the top. I definitely would recommend doing the hammer and nail route. And the other thing that's great about this is anywhere I use a nail gun here in the future of this video, you could also use this technique if you don't have one, which is great. Then I decided not to hook the roof onto my house because I wanted to use it as a storage box, which I will show you an idea here in a second. But I went through to finish it off and just added some of this puffy white paint. If you guys have watched my Christmas videos before, I love using this for fake icing. It dries 3D, but it dries completely hard, but it looks just like icing. I made sure to add drips. I added some shingles to my roof and I'm so happy with how this turned out. Now I plan to use this on my coffee bar slash hot cocoa bar for the holidays because all you have to do is pop the roof off and you can fill it up with hot cocoa, any other flavorings for your coffee. I have tea in there right now and then you just pop the roof back on. I think I'm gonna make another one and allow Finn to decorate his own. I think it's gonna be a great memory and a keepsake. I love doing these wood projects for Christmas in July because it allows me to get a lot of these projects done when the weather is so much nicer here in Illinois. The closer we get to Christmas, the colder it gets and the harder it is to get outside and do these projects. I also love to share them with you early because I know a lot of you are prepping for holiday vendor shows so you can make these to put them in your booth or if you don't already have a business, these would be great just to make on the side and sell on Facebook Marketplace or even just friends and family. And that way you can make some extra money heading into the holidays. 
Now, as we're working through these projects, we've got some scraps, so I've got an idea for you, and these are so fun. You're gonna cut a piece from your fence picket that is seven inches long. I cut three pieces at that seven inches, and those are approximately the size of a postcard. Now, originally I was going to do postcards with these, but then I got the idea to make fun little movie poster signs. So like every other project, we're gonna go through and sand them, and then you're gonna pick the side that you want to be where your artwork goes, and we're going to cover it in Mod Podge. Then I found some fun movie posters for my three favorite Christmas movies. I did White Christmas, Elf, and Christmas Vacation. I sized them to five and a half inches wide by seven inches tall in Canva, printed them out, and then once that Mod Podge is dry, we are going to use some heat to re-engage it. I like this because I don't have a laser jet printer, I have an inkjet printer, and I didn't want the Mod Podge to have that ink run everywhere. So this is a great way to hook it with Mod Podge without having it get wet. The heat is just re-engaging that Mod Podge. It's going to suck in that paper. And then all you have to do is go along the edges to get rid of any overhang with a little bit of sandpaper. And these things are good to go. You can go over the top with some more Mod Podge if you want, but because they're gonna be in my house, I'm not worried about sealing them. These are great as signs. They would be super cute to add to a Christmas movie night display, or you could add printables, you could add sheet music. You could even do this with photos. So if you wanna do a family photo instead of a movie poster, the sky's the limit and it's a great way to use scraps not only of fence pickets but in general. A great way to use fence pickets or pallet wood is to create signs out of them. So here I wanted a square sign so because my fence pickets are about five and a half inches wide I decided to cut two pieces at 11 inches long to create a square. Then I cut two pieces of just scrap fence picket. These are four inch wide ones and I cut them down so that they could brace the back. So they're just short 10 inches wide instead of 11 inches wide and I sanded them down and used my nail gun and wood glue to hook them together. You just want to brace the back so that way your sign isn't going to come apart and the wood glue helps with the bond. So for my DIY in this video, I am painting it red, but at this point you have a great blank sign. So you can put whatever you want on here. You can paint whatever color that you want. So that technique is really universal and you can use it for any type of sign DIY. Once I had my red dry, I took a ruler and just created a square around the outside to kind of give me somewhere to start my hand lettering. Now I have recently gone down the rabbit hole on TikTok of doing your own calligraphy and it has been a couple months I've been trying to practice and so I decided I was going to give it a go here. I've been trying to hand letter some more signs here just because I think it's a fun thing to know how to do. If you don't want to do it by hand, you could obviously add a decal, printable, stickers, whatever you have, but I think this is a cool technique. Now I went through with a pencil first and then I went through with my favorite Amazon paint markers to create hot cocoa. I thickened up some of the lines based on some of the video tutorials I found on TikTok and then I went around the outside for my box. I let it dry and I went over it a second time just because these paint markers just they will be brighter white if you do it twice. I added 25 cents a cup to the bottom and some fun snowflakes. Now here is where I think it takes it up a notch. I recently did a mystery box project that made a s'more sign that looked like it was dripping chocolate. So I wanted to do this for hot chocolate for Christmas too. I took some of that puffy paint we used on the gingerbread one, except for this is their brown color. And I created some little drips, tapped it on the table, and then let it dry. It looks like hot chocolate is flowing over a mug, and I think this is so fun. It's got that shiny finish, but it is not wet at all. It just appears like it is wet chocolate, and this is gonna be another piece that's gonna look so fun in my gingerbread hot cocoa dining room come this Christmas. I think it looks so cute next to this have a cup of cheer sign and this is also a fence picket DIY you guys this is one of my favorites in the video this one and the next one I saved the best for last so I'm cutting two pieces at 22 inches as well as grabbing some scrap one by two from a previous wood build video to brace the back I put my two pieces together and started by really roughly I'm not an artist but I roughly drew out a kind of to go coffee mug then when I got it to where I wanted, I grabbed my jigsaw and started cutting. I started with one side and really just got the shape that I wanted. And once I was at a place where I felt like it looked like how I wanted it, I flipped it over to mirror it on the second piece so that they really were a mirror image of each other. 
I cut them both by hand, but trying to make it a mirror image really helped it look a lot more cohesive and not like I just, you know, whittled it by hand with no knowledge. Once I got it to the dimensions and size and shape that I wanted, it was time to sand it. And I made sure to not only sand the top and bottom really well to get rid of any of those marker marks, but I also made sure to go around on the edges because when you cut with a jigsaw, you get really rough edges. I would definitely recommend a jigsaw as a great beginner tool because you can make straight cuts with it. You can also make these fun shape cuts. It's one of the first ones I got into and I absolutely love mine. I use it all the time. I will link it down below as well as all my other tools. Once those were all sanded, I took both pieces of the brace, which is just scrap I had. You can use whatever you have and one inch nails to hook it all together as well as some wood glue. That is how I am bracing everything in this video. Then we're gonna start with just one coat of white chalk paint just to neutralize everything. And now is the fun part getting to design it. Now, I don't do anything too elaborate because I don't feel like I'm that great at drawing, but here it was some simple lines and I pulled up a sign that was just not a Christmas mug, but it was just a general teacher sign mug that I will link if I can find it down in the description if you want to look at that while you paint yours as well if you decide to make this. Once I had the sleeve as well as the lid kind of roughed out, I started by painting the cup itself red and then I used the color territorial beige as my like cardboard little cup sleeve here where we're going to end up putting words. Once those two colors were dry, I did two coats of them, by the way, and then I went through with a black paint marker, same brand as the white ones we used on the hot cocoa sign, and I'm using that picture on my phone just to figure out where they put those lines. That is how I'm able to do a lot of these because if I see something, I can recreate it. If it's just straight out of my mind, I struggle a lot, unless it's digital design, but physically drawing things, yeah, it, it's a struggle. I'm using a mixture of black and white paint markers here to add some different lines to give it a whimsy look. And then I started adding some snowflakes all around to kind of look like a red cup from Starbucks for Christmas. It's obviously not gonna look exactly like that, but between the squiggles, the dots, and the snowflakes, I think it turned out really cute. Now my last step was to add some lettering to the center and I decided to go the Cricut route here, but again, you could do the hand lettering like I did in the last project. And I needed something about eight inches wide by four inches tall. And this is a free cut file that will be over on my blog. Have a cup of cheer. I just added it in black matte vinyl right on top of my coffee mug with some paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. As you guys know, I love this because it's low tack. It's gonna pick up your vinyl, but it's not gonna rip up that paint when you go to peel it back. And if you're using a strong tack transfer tape, it definitely will peel it up and you'll be so upset. This is another one where I don't feel like I need to seal it because it's an indoor sign, but if you plan to use this like as a door hanger or something, you can put a polycrylic over the top. I am obsessed with this. This turned out way better than I even thought it could. And I hope so badly that you guys will break out your jigsaws and try it as well, because I would love to see your take on this. I might also have to make a fall or Halloween one. And I had so much fun with my jigsaw on that project that I decided to go big with this five foot snowman porch leaner. And you guys, it's so much easier than you would think. I took three of those six foot long fence pickets and cut them down to five feet. You can adjust the height to whatever works for your space. And those pieces are great scrap for some more tags. So I'll be making those later. I lined the three of them up and then I looked at a picture of a snowman like porch leaner online to help me kind of get the idea of where the shape was. Now the goal here is to leave the piece of wood in the center just as it is and then cut the outsides so it looks like a curve of the snowman. I used a pen because for some reason my pencil was just not working for me and once I got to the top I also laid out my one by two which is going to be the brim of my hat so I kind of knew where to draw that. Both this and the coffee mug this is just me winging it. I look at a picture and I just kind of sketch it out and between sketching it out, cutting it with the jigsaw here, and then using the sander to kind of shape it, it all kind of comes together. So don't freak out if it's a little jagged before you start sanding because the sander can do wonders. Now, same thing that we did with that coffee mug. I'm just flipping it over to the other piece of wood as a mirror so I can cut that out. So we're gonna have two squiggly pieces on either side of the straight one in the center. I also had to trim a little bit off the top of one of the pieces and curve it so it matched the hat. Now I love the way that the body looked, but for some reason the hat 
was bigger than the head and it just looked funky. So I ended up trimming it down. And once I did that, I was definitely way more happy with the shape of my snowman. So this took a couple iterations, but once I kept tinkering with it, it got to where I wanted it. I also went to my scrap wood pile and grabbed just some random pieces of wood. And this one by two is just long enough to personal preference. I think it's like 22 inches. Before I pitched my scraps from the jigsaw, I grabbed a piece that kind of looked like a nose, cut it down further, and then it was time to sand. You are going to want to go with that power sander if you can. You can hand sand it, but it's gonna take you a lot longer. I'm using 100 grit sandpaper here and I'm making sure to really get the edges so they aren't rough. This is sanded smooth to the touch. This is unsanded, super rough splinters everywhere. I also rocked along the edges so it wasn't too like sharp of an angle. You're able to do that just by kind of going around the edges. Once we're all sanded, we are gonna go through and make sure that my good sides for my wood are facing down. And then we're gonna brace the back with those scrap wood pieces. So again, douse it with some wood glue, set it down, and then you can either do nail and hammer or a nail gun if you have it. I'm using one inch nails. If you're using some fence pickets to brace the back, I would suggest going with 5 8 inch nails because they will pop through if you're using two thin pieces of wood. I ended up having to grab one more to brace the back of the hat and then I hooked that on and then it was time to paint. So I did my nose orange, my hat black and painted my entire snowman body with just white chalk paint. Nothing crazy here, just chalk paint that I get at Walmart. And then to give it a little bit of dimension, I went around with a separate paintbrush with gray paint and created the curvatures of the three balls of snow that would make a snowman. They look kind of dark here, but then once I put them on while they're still wet, I'm going to buff it back out with some white and that is going to allow it to look like there are three pieces of rounded snowballs stacked on top of each other. And that really helps take away some of these straight lines that were created with the jigsaw because I am not that that skilled in it but this really helped soften it and also make it look more rounded than it actually is. Then it's as easy as taking screws, nail gun, or even doing it by hand to add your nose as well as the brim of your hat. And then I just had some scrap fabric from Valentine's Day, which I like this coloration. I tied it right around his neck. And what I really like too about this is you could easily just swap out the scarf color for a more wintry type like a green or even a black and you can use this well through winter it's not just a christmas project thanks so much for watching as always head down to the comments let me know what your favorite project was today i also have a huge video from last year using similar fence pickets that has a ton more ideas as well so if you love this one you will also love that video as well and be sure while you're down there to check out the full playlist for Christmas in July. All these amazing creators have put in a ton of hard work to bring you some great ideas to help you get a jumpstart on the holidays. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!